having a rather frustrating afternoon. So, hopefully talking about the theory of the problem of evil and escaping pain will also take care of the rest of the harmonic series of mosquitoes. I'm trying to tie together this conversation that I had about the spirit, or like the Holy Spirit, and the transformation of history, and then also the one on forgiveness, and the problem of evil, and evil's place, or rather lack thereof, in creation, and then the Grail Country interview, and I can't remember his name, but on undoing the crucifixion, and like, the transformation of fallen history, and essentially of sin and death in Christian terms. Um, yeah. So, the Spirit, or like the Holy Spirit, is interesting. There is, to me, poetically and like, my vision of that is that it's sort of the same thing as like the Logos or Christ in creation, um, Sophia, or like wisdom or the divine feminine, uh, God's presence in and through creation, even the angels in the sense of patterns and sort of the harmonies underneath and through creation. So I see that as all the same sort of current. And in the Christian story, there's the idea of the spirits descending, right, coming down. Well, obviously, even from the beginning, you know, the spirit moved on the face of the water and let there be light and there was light. But then also the spirit coming down most centrally at Pentecost and giving wisdom, giving like insight, gifts, um, the fruit of the spirit, right, and personal transformation that makes somebody into the image of, of Christ and makes them alive and like takes away the false self and reveals the one could say the true self. In a very, like, personal way. And the same pattern with not only the human, each human person, but the whole of, of history. Um, because there's the idea that the time of the spirit is the time of like revealing that which has been hidden, that which has always been there, but it's been hidden. And like the truth that has been hidden and revealing and perfecting sort of God's work or the creation. And this refining process. Olivier Clément in Transfiguring Time says, he talks about how history, the, the central narrative of, of history is not about the big movements, it's not about like the revolutions and the wars and the different societies and kings and who died when. It's about each each person, or one could say each being, um, but each person's heart and each of our personal sort of journeys um, in relation to to God or like to the universe. And so 
and my my mental images of sort of a sort of web of light and then different nodes of light would be each each person you know each center each perspective on the world and each heart and those are sort of connected and then in between that they sort of cast out and in between that that's all of like the setting for it right and the different countries and religions are like and and big movements and patterns in collective history but the emphasis ought to be on each soul or heart and That certainly checks out with the idea that we are co-creators with God of this universe and that we each, our world is shaped by our perception and our attitudes and essentially our spirit. And so there's not this sort of disembodied, objective view of things. Like, it's always from somebody's perspective. It's always somebody's heart who's analyzing whatever and giving a judgment and making it or experiencing a certain world or state of affairs. So, time history as in like the collective human history or history of earth or the universe um so time history each of our individual stories of our lives and then just each person and like our heart and our relationships and our identity that's all connected and it's all really the same thing and we can see that the same pattern applies with the spirit perfecting, refining, transforming, revealing Christ in or God in or, you know, the true nature of, whether it be a person, whether it be the entirety of the, of the history of Earth. Which of course brings us to the, the problem of evil and sin and death and pain and suffering. Certainly much of the chronological history of the planet and a lot, pl a plenty of the chronological history of any person is marked by suffering. and my mistakes and ignorance and how how is that dealt with um, and of course you can talk about it on like a collective scale of like history in general or like the coming of the kingdom in, uni in, u ugh, in a universal sense but it's more relevant to me to talk about one lifetime or like my lifetime and the stuff that I have to forgive, be forgiven of, heal from, in my own lifetime. Because um, it's just, well, that's where it starts and, and ends, really, in a sense. So, yeah, that pattern of the spirit's work as applied to evil or or pain. There's a phrase from a Jacob Collier song that has, I don't even know what it means, I don't know if it means anything, but for me it expresses the way that I try to deal with like evil, I guess, or, or problems lately, which is, um, you, you sanctify, don't justify. 
So, like, take something bad that happened in the past. And I'm going to use a very, I mean, I have, like, serious examples, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, a, I'm gonna use a, a trivial example, which is, like, recently getting, getting a cold and being sick for a while and, like, being in discomfort. So, there's that, right? That's like a bad thing. And an instance of evil touching creation and touching history. So there's the pain and there's this sort of process of dealing with that, you know, healing it, coming to terms with it, forgiving, Jacob Collier also says, there is no such thing as a wrong note if you know how to harmonize, which pretty much also describes the process of dealing with wrong notes in life and in history. And it's, it's, a, it's a process and like, it's kind of, it's very tricky. Because on the one hand, evil does exist in the sense, like, I had a cold, and while I was having it, I was literally sick. I couldn't just say, well, evil doesn't exist, so I'm just going to get up, just do everything like normal. I had to deal with it, like, have a proper response, and rest, and take medicine, and whatever. Then in another sense, evil doesn't exist, as in evil is just a, it's a privation of the good, and will, and can be completely eradicated, essentially. So harmonizing it would be dealing with it, the evil thing, insofar as it exists, but then also, eventually, shifting perspective and allowing that thing to be completely carried away and completely forgiven. And there's that verse about, like, our sins being cast in the depths of the sea, and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory. I mean, these images of complete universal restoration and, and perfection. So if, if I wanted to put it into stages, so on the one hand, you have like the discomfort and suffering of being sick, and that's, that's bad, right? Then I could come a bit further and say, well, but this discomfort and, and suffering also allowed, it was, you know, a trial that refined me and made me better, and it opened up a quiet space, I did a lot of good thinking in that time, um, so it has been used for good, and the idea of, like, redemptive suffering, or, like, that we have to suffer so that, you know, that God uses suffering in some way to accomplish good ends, and then, so then that original event of the sickness is not just bad, right, there's also the good aspect of it. So you've come from like bad pain, suffering to okay, seeing the good, seeing the sort of silver lining as it were. And that is where sometimes I stop. But I don't think I should stop there. Um I think the the process needs to go further. Because when I stop right there in that sort of halfway point of like, well, this was bad, but good came from it, therefore I accept the bad, that good may come. Let us do evil that good may come? Mm -mm. That's very honey and barbiturates. That's very, okay, well, I'll give you something good, but you have to have something killing and, and bad and death with it. But 
No, we're supposed to give no place to the devil. We're supposed to die to death. So, to justify it would be to do that. To say, well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go of the original, like, you know, bitterness about it, about it, like, ugh, why did I get sick? You know, I never should have. I'm so stupid for allowing myself to be. Like, I'm going to move past those thoughts, see the good, but I'm still going to be holding on to that original bitterness and that original pain. And this is very much more noticeable with bigger wounds that really shape a person and are very much part of, of one's story so that it becomes I see that the trials and suffering that I've gone through have had this good fruit have made me the person I am have refined me have transformed me in that way like the Holy Spirit does therefore I'm going to say well I'm going to like it leads me to almost identify myself with that pain and like hold on to it in that way as a necessary part of my identity but this holds me back from fully healing an image for this sort of process is like if you have a bitter seed and then slowly it grows into a good like flower that's like all good and beautiful and the the process of sanctifying oh i just realized sanctification is like what the holy spirit is supposed to do right so that's perfect so the sanctifying or like forgiveness and true harmonization would be in the end to only have the flower and in some and for the seed itself to not even be nor ever have been a bitter seed like in the fullness of time in the full view of the event there was never any bitterness there was never any like it's all all transformed but this sort of justifying halfway position is like uh holding on to both the bitter seed and the and the and the flower making evil a part of good making pain and suffering an integral and necessary part of creation and to me that's the same pattern as like believing in eternal conscious torment and being like well some people have to go to hell I mean, it's not obviously as as bad but it's the same sort of path well some people have to go to hell so that we can have heaven i'm like holding both a lovely bitter water, as the Ohalot song says. So somehow, my goal is through, it, my goal is for both, both the trivial and the really traumatic places where evil has touched my life and my identity and my story to not justify that, but to sanctify it so that eventually, in the fullness of time, my honest answer, if I was asked about that, would be, oh, like, that was like, it never happened. Not in the sense of ignoring but in the sense of being completely healed. Not to say, oh yeah, the pain shaped me, made me who I am, or whatever, but what, what, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, the fruit of the spirit, etc. Against such there is no law. And I believe this is something that's possible, and thinking about how it happens, 
you start thinking about like time and truth and seeing truth and reality as something beyond just the realm of like facts sort of dehum un- inhuman like objective facts and then seeing time as not as just a linear chronology but as more of uh, the dimension of personal encounter that's what Olivier Clément says but in, just in like a non-linear way where Plexus from the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, you know, looking back on and sort of recontextualizing our memories is a legitimate process and, like, really does change the past. Because, again, the universe is, is personal and it's always from somebody's perspective and it's always in somebody's heart. That event that happened to me, it didn't, it isn't just like a, an isolated fact, it's a personal experience it's part of me therefore i can change it or it can be cha- i allow it to be changed another example of this that i think is really good that i believe nate brought up and basically what what this is talking about because the idea is that like evil is a privation of the good or also that it comes from ignorance, right? And like having the wrong perspective. And again, with, with spirit and revelation, not being able to see the full picture or experience the full picture. And therefore, things are sort of twisted and partial. Um, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. So, say you were in an argument with someone and they said like I hate you so much and they were crying and like you 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 storm away in anger you spend the whole night miserable thinking that this person hates you and have the suffering and grief of that maybe you don't talk to them after that for a long time sometime in the future you talk and they're like I, I didn't say I hate you, I said, like, I don't know, I care about you so much. But you misheard what they said. So, that past event of you hearing, I hate you so much, and the subsequent pain, and suffering and evil, is now, in a sense, never happened, right? Because it was due to a misunderstanding. In another sense, it did happen, because the pain is certainly real. But in another sense, it didn't happen. And now in the future that the knowledge is fuller and it's revealed, the valency and the nature of that past event changes. And the idea is that all evil and all suffering is like that. That it's real, you know, in the sense of, I don't know, we feel suffering. But it's not real in the sense that there is something ontologically deeper than that that can be revealed in the present and it brings us into a fuller kind of time and a fuller identity and transforms everything, the the whole history. Many things that happen in human history, many things that happen in my life are factually true, but so to speak, ontologically false because they betray deeper realities because God is good and God is good and reality is good. which means that there is a deeper good reality underneath, so to speak, evil and the suffering and trauma, which can be unfolded and completely subsume it and sanctify it, not justify, but sanctify so that it would be like, so that it really never happened.
And again, maybe the maybe after that like argument and misunderstanding, the relationship between the two people would uh, still be strained. We'd probably have to have really actually I have a I have an actual example of this. Hold up, I don't know why I gave like a hypothetical story. This pencil pouch is has all of my um all of my like a lot of like personal stuff in it and also happen to have all my like credit card and passport and everything and I was about to go back to well I was living in another city at the time but anyway I was about to fly off the right the like the day before I lost this and we looked everywhere and went back to the store where I had been and figured I must have lost it there so I'm grieving I had like a I was very distressed I went through the whole process of replacing my personal information, replacing the um, cards and whatever, and went back to my apartment, lived there for months, still thinking occasionally about the pencil pouch, came back, and uh, as soon as I got to my room, I, I found it just like sitting there. So... In the full reality, I never even lost it. wasn't even that it was found and returned to me. It was that I literally had never lost it. It was sitting there the whole time. But in another sense, I very much experienced the loss of what was what is a, a very like treasured part of me and possession of mine. And... Sometimes I still have it in my head that, like, it's lost and I have to remind myself, like, no, like, that never even happened. So that's the perfect example of what I'm talking about here and trying to get at here. So, and it's, it's, it's hard because it's, like, especially with big, with big traumas that does become sort of part of, of, my you know identity and especially because those events do shape me and they do have good fruit of course um so the temptation is to is to sort of leave room for the loss and to leave and to hold on to that longer than is necessary and like to hold on to it and to continue to give it place instead of allowing you know you want I have to accept, or I ha it's it's like, well, you know, this wasn't lost at all, therefore, like, all of that grief that I felt, and distress, and the whole replacing everything, and trying to cope with the loss of stuff that I didn't want to lose, was that, like, meaningless, was that, like, that was all for nothing, but it's not that it wasn't for nothing, it's that, like, it never happened. Or rather that in the fullness of time, the experience will be that it never happened. Because of course it's all like a process and takes a lot of time. And possibly, you know, ages of ages. Especially talking about the whole of humanity, but we can see these patterns or we can see the spirit at work with this revealing and transforming and forgiving even now. I think all the time about John, I do not remember his last name, but he's on special books for special kids. He has that disease where his skin is like just an open wound. And since he was born, he had that. And his life is defined by that. Well, it looks like his life is defined by that. Um, and his parents' lives. And... He, his story has definitely been touched by evil and suffering. The interviewer asked him, do you ever think about how your first introduction to the world was like excruciating pain? Which is factually true. Baby's born, his skin is like bleeding. 
and he he was like oh well, like that's interesting never really thought about it that way before and he said when i think about my birth i'm always like so touched that my parents cared about me enough even when i was so little and helpless to like learn about my condition and how to take care of me and take me home and that i've always been surrounded by that kind of love in in one sense the suffering in his life certainly did happen and is happening but in another sense his parents love is ontologically deeper and more real than his pain and suffering and already he has just like an incredible perspective and attitude and is able to turn his perspective from the pain to focusing on and always moving toward like the light and the love and he also said about like his life in general he's like i'm gonna remember the good times i'm not gonna remember the times when i spent two weeks lying in bed i'm gonna remember the good times so that's where he puts his attention and focus and worship essentially and himself and that's in memory and resurrection that's what i talked about also because it's the same it's the same process of like creation, refining, forgiveness, resurrection, memory. The making of a soul, an identity, the making of a world, and like history and story. But yeah, what they're speaking of. The entire sweep of human history or the scope of my life or the frustrating afternoon that I've had the spirit wisdom sanctifies um, but does not justify evil and sin and death and i'm so happy that i have this back and i say have it back but i mean i have a lost